Steve, thanks for joining me again. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. Of course. Oh, anytime. Good to have you back. We spoke on um, Skype last time, so it's good to actually put a face to the voice on um, in the um, interview. Now, we'll get to the new album in a minute, but one thing that sort of struck me um, the other day was if we go back to the previous album, Final Days, and yeah. you read through the lyrics and you go through uh in the dawn of the ai i mean it was pretty topical then and that was three years ago but uh gee wow lots happened in three years hasn't it yeah that's right uh though i have to say that in the dawn of the ai is actually about uh, an ai that uh, develops a self consciousness and um then starts attacking mankind uh or the humans whatever but but i i Actually, I don't see that happening right now. I I think that is more the people using AI against other people. But it's still, mm. you're right, it's still crazy how fast it all went now. I mean, I could probably do this whole interview with AI, but I choose not to. So, um... <laughs> <laughs> right, what's happened? You've got a new album about to come out, but what's happened? I mean, it's three years now. What's happened in that time for the band and yourself? I mean, it wasn't a lot that was happening because it was mainly uh, during the pandemic, right? Mm. So um, we were uh, actually releasing directly into the pandemic. Um, we uh, wanted to do a release tour, like a, a headline tour in 2021 uh, that uh, would have been Orden Ogan, Grave Digger Rage. Didn't work out. We had to postpone that. Um, then we went into 2022, I think, um, uh, tried it again with Orden Ogan Brothers of Metal Windrose, uh, postponed that again, had to cancel that again. And uh, after three times, we were like, okay, this is not going to work. Let's <laughs> see w when the pandemic ends. And uh, so, uh, yeah, um, basically, we started uh, writing new songs back then we, because we were like, okay, this is the only thing that we can do. I mean, we just released an album, but let's write songs and be creative. Um, and also, um, parallelly, uh, I personally started Angus Mac 6. I don't know if you heard about that. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, so that was quite a lot of work as well. Uh, so on organ activities were a little bit, I wouldn't say paused, but slowed down in that time. Yes. Mm. Okay. So you're writing for uh, quite a while. Um, I noticed your uh, studio, Green Man Studio. Tell us about that. Yeah, it's basically, I mean, when I started uh, making music, I was uh, looking in our local area here for, for people who could record and produce that. And uh, I mean, nowadays, you know, they're not even if you if you look like a lot further away, there are just very few people who can do that like on a on a really, really good level. And so uh, even back then we were like, OK, I, I think we have to do it ourselves and learn how to do that um, just to be able to um, realize our own creative vision. And um, yeah, I mean, I think Eastern Hope in 2010 was the first record that I completely mixed on my own. And uh, it re received a lot of like really, really good reviews. And also there were, were a, lot, a lot of people um asking the record company for example who mixed this record you know and yeah, um, so so back then uh, there were a lot of questions from from other bands like okay who did this can we work with him because it sounds great and back then i was actually thinking to myself do i want to be the guy who is working with like the local bands or do i want to be the guy who is working like with with decent uh, professional bands and uh, so i i i chose that and so it was for me like a couple of years, the Valley of Tears, you know, like it was, I was always comparing my mixes to, to the stuff that Andy Sneep does, for example. And uh, it always sounded so much better what Andy does, of course, uh, not what I did. And, and um, yeah, so I was uh, frustrated for, for years and years, but it also gave me motivation to work on my skills and become better as a producer and uh, funnily enough, uh, actually, these days I'm thinking, uh, not even thinking, it's actually reality right now. I'm I'm actually declining like 95% of the requests that I get for the studio yeah, right. uh, because I'm, I'm, I'm actually 
trying to focus only on Orden Ogarn and uh, Angus Max Six now. Um, I have been mixing the latest uh, Rap Studio Fire record. Uh, I'm also in the studio with uh, Brainstorm right now. Um, but yeah, basically, uh, like smaller local bands, I don't work with anymore. Yeah. Okay. Right. New album coming out. Tell us about that. It's a very, uh, I will have to compliment you on the mix because it is a very polished mix. That's uh, the first thing I noticed when I listened to it the other night. I went back inside. My wife was like, what's it like? I said, oh, very good, very polished. So uh, well done. Um, Thank you. What are your favourite tracks off the album? Is it too early to call? No, I have to say, um, I mean, these days, Orden Ugan has, has a lot of economical success, at least in Europe. So it works really well for us. But still, it's important for me to say that we mainly do this for ourselves. We, we mainly do this because we love what we want to do. And even if we are playing in front of 50 people, we would still do it, you know. So um, that also translates to us doing a record. Uh, there will not be a song on the record where we think mm, uh, it's not a, not a good song or whatever, you know. So um, I really like them all a lot. Um, and I mean, you have to pick songs for the singles where you think, OK, they might be even a little better than the rest. But in this case, it was also pretty difficult. I think we could just have gone with with some of the others as well. Um, so I, I cannot I cannot really say that. Um, I, uh, I, of course, the singles, I like them a lot, uh, but I cannot hear them and you cannot listen to that anymore because I've, I've heard them so often now <laughs> um, while recording and producing the videos and everything. Um, songs to check, if, if somebody were to, to check out the band with this record, I would say The Order of Fear, Kings of the Underworld, um conquest maybe maybe it's those three out of all um but i also really like the songs that are not singles like uh, prince of uh, sorrow um blind man a dreadlord these these are all like really good songs for me mm. you know if mm. i was not of the opinion that that these are really good songs i we wouldn't have put them on the record no it's a very consistent album uh quality wise thank you uh, and I like the long darkness, by the way. You forgot that one. Yeah, that was actually written for um, for the Gunman sessions in 2017. Right. Okay. Um, we actually had recorded that for Gunman as well, so it's actually the drum tracks from Gunman. And um, but back then we thought that Gunman was already a very long record, yeah, and yeah. also it had uh, um, one long song in the end that is called Phoenix Coronat Opus, and uh, so we were like maybe we just save that for later and uh, yeah. so we this time it, it felt right because the the other new songs are all very to the point and pretty short and uh, like like get to the point real quick so we were like okay it could really need a long song in the end and uh, we just had to, to tweak the lyrics a little bit so that it fit in with the rest of the concept yeah okay now with the time that the album's coming out i mean you're right in the middle of uh, festival season uh right now um when are you going on the road? Has that been planned yet, or is it too early to uh, do that? Oh man, uh, my my last couple of months were like incredibly be busy. Uh, we have been on the t uh, on the road with uh, Feuerschwanz, you know them, German band. Yes, 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 yeah. yes. Um, in April, we are like you said already in the festival season, so we're like basically in and out of the plane. So my whole like sleep cycle is completely <laughs> fucked up. We that's in the Czech Republic, Sweden, Finland, Spain, Netherlands. So all over Europe already uh, leaving to Hellfest in France in like tomorrow. Um, uh, yeah, plus plus the rest of the stuff. Like I said, I, I'm, I'm in the studio with Brainstorm currently as well. And we also moved this weekend. So basically yesterday we're moving like from one house to another. So it's like 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 everything is uh, super fucked up. This this is also why I was late like ten minutes because I was like, okay, I don't get like, all the dates straight anymore. Sorry about that. 
with um going out on the road on your own tour that might be a little while off um now but how how are bands coping over there now did you have much of a venue drop off because of the pandemic and fewer venues this many bands trying to fit into this many venues has that been a problem have you spotted that um not that that it got less venues there are a lot of bands on the road right now because they're trying mm. to um yeah like like compensate for what was lost in in the years of mm. the pandemic so that you can really see that like um not so many people come to every single show because there are just so many bands on the road yeah um so that that you can really feel um apart from that uh, what you can also see is that there are a lot of people uh, like in like that have been working for crew like uh, sound guys light guys and stuff that are just basically like like in serious jobs right now you know like not touring anymore <laughs> so um uh, and then also i mean if there's a, so a shortage of uh, professional personnel then uh, you can of course expect that their their rates are going up as well you know so mm. everything got a lot more expensive and mm. um mm. it's crazy it's uh, like uh, the costs have been exploding like for everything that you do um so but apart from the venues i, I don't think that there are so many i don't i actually don't know about like one single venue that was closed down or something yeah okay yeah we lost a couple i saw a couple in the us that um uh shut down which is uh very unfortunate so it's good that you um haven't suffered in that regard yep. i will tell you though um lately there's so many bands touring um australia it's almost like you're having to pick and choose which overseas band you go and see which is like bizarre and they're all coming through so my question to you is when are you coming down <laughs> to australia yeah no i'm i'm afraid of uh, like spiders and snakes and all that, <laughs> oh, that crazy all this crazy stuff that you've like basically everything in your country can kill you instantly so i'm, I'm not going to australia <laughs> <laughs> no no like uh, seriously on a serious note um i'm uh i'm actually uh, always um I think it's impressive that people survive in Australia. Look, I'm, I will no, tell I'm, you. Uh, honest, no, on a, on a serious note, um, you know, there's nothing planned at the moment, um, but it, uh, it, it's not about us. I mean, we have not proactively looking to tour Australia, uh, but we haven't uh, got any amazing offers yet so far as well. Mm. You know, So if there's like a promoter who wants to work with the band, uh, you can get in touch and we can see if we can make it happen. Um, and I uh, honestly, I would love to. So uh, yeah, let's see if we can make it work. How did you go with the recording of this? Did you have any um, interesting stories about the uh, the recording of this new album? Yeah, like I um, like I mentioned before, you know, like we do this mainly for ourselves and it uh, like the songs have to be great for us in first place. And when we started writing, we we're basically, I wouldn't say it was a writer's block, but everything that we wrote didn't feel good enough for us. We we're like, mm. Mm, okay, this is just a repetition of what we've done before. And like, uh, I don't know, like it's, it's not, it's not stuff that I would enjoy listening to myself. And so uh, that went on for, for a little while. And we were like, mm. uh, I, I mean, like, I'm personally, I would rather not make a record than do a record that is, you know, not not 100% what I love to do. And uh, so we're thinking about, okay, what can we do? And um, then there was uh, there's this uh, super fan from Uruguay. His name is Santi. And he caught our attention because he was basically putting out an Orden Ogan cover like every every <laughs> two weeks or something. So I, I think he must have covered, meanwhile, like, like uh, all the um, things uh, that we've, we've done meanwhile to this point and um so i just gave him a call at, at, at some point and was like okay uh we 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 heard all your cover songs and he was like uh, he was uh, i mean we're all very very down to earth normal guys uh, in the band and also the the concept of being starstruck is is super alien to us we're we're not like we're like very normal people 
Uh, but for him, it must have been as if James Hetfield gives you a call, you know, because <laughs> Alton Organ is like his number one most favorite band in the universe. Um, and uh, I was just talking to him, was like, oh, we heard all your, your cover uh, songs. And he was like, oh, that's so great, and blah, blah, blah. And then at a certain point, I was like, could you imagine, like, imagining, like, checking out what we are doing for the next record or maybe even write a song <laughs> yourself? So and he was like, oh, wow, this is so great. This is the best day of my life. And um, yeah, it, he was like, okay, where do you want to go with it? And I, I told him what the direction of the record is and uh, like one or two references of other Odd Logan songs. And he was like, ah, I get you totally. I totally understand where you want to go with it. And um, yeah, two days later, we got the first idea from him. And uh, this was so good uh, already uh, that it went directly into the middle section of one song. And um he put out a lot, like, I don't know, like 80 ideas or something. And in the end, it wasn't even so much that went on the record from him. It was like maybe six or seven parts, like a rhythm part here or like a riff for a verse there, whatever. Um, but what it really did for us, what is what, what it really did for us is it showed us how he thinks that Orden Ogan should sound like with the description I gave him of what we want to do. Mm. And um, this was for us, it, uh, in Germany, you would say it untied the knot, you know, and we were like, ah, mm. okay, now mm, we get yeah. it. And uh, from that point on, the songwriting went super smooth, very quick, um, and uh, it was amazing. And uh, he's super happy uh, with, with it, and he's actually uh, thinking about moving to Germany right now. So it's uh, like a real Hollywood story, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. That's really good. Boy. Uh, look, I reckon we've got enough to use here. Awesome. So what I will do is, can I get you to do one favor for me with your free hand? And yes. Just give us the horns for me, please. Excellent for the interview screenshot. Thank you so much. See, thanks so much for taking the time. Good luck You're with welcome. your new thanks album. Good luck with the new album. Thank Hope you. it goes really well for you. And good luck in the future with all that you do in your studio and hopefully we'll speak to you again on the next album cycle yes sir will do bye bye yeah.